Okay, friends, I assume that these are recording and they're recording good. As some of you are well aware, based on the date that you can see on your screen and the video title, you know what's coming next. I'm just right now working on the prep work to get everything done. You can see I've got my laptop that is transferring files. I'm hoping that this one's going to work better than the last one that I used. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I don't really have much time for testing because I've still got to get everything ready. i got five days worth of stuff that i got to pack up. So we'll go ahead and we'll just go out and take a look at some things before we get things ready to go. So we'll take a look outside now at the the state of the vehicle which probably the first time I've ever actually cleaned it thoroughly. Well, actually that's not true. But it's the first time that it's been clean in a while. You see there's just random schmutz. Normally there's receipts all over the place in the back. I have a Betamax machine that's going to somebody else. And these are normally in the back seat along with those. I'm just going to leave them here in the trunk. There's no reason for them to be anywhere else come in and take a look at the trash vortex. I did some pre-hamfest thrifting and got some stuff. Not too terrifically much. I have a 3Com 3C905 for like a dollar fifty. So that wasn't too bad. This is a gigabyte motherboard box, but it's not a gigabyte motherboard in it. It's just some crappy Asus board with a Celeron on it. Don't even think I got the I.O. plate either. No, I got no I.O. plate. Jerks. Well, whatever. It's got some RAM on it. Probably like 128 megs, if I had to guess. But, uh, one thing I did notice about this is there's no AGP slot. It's got onboard video, but there's... I guess the onboard video preempted the AGP slot on this board, so... Well, that's a thing. I'll have to figure out where I'm going to put that. You don't usually see something like this. Brand new technology the easy way. There'll probably be a video about that at some point. I paid too much for it, but it's there. Those were trash picked. Uh, this monitor, I already have one of these, but the speakers are bad on mine, so I'm going to see if the speakers are good on this one, and if they are, I'll just get rid of the other one. Random clock radio. I have a, this is a case here. I actually bought this the other day, but I'm going to include it just for the sake of including it. I think it's a Cooler Master Elite 335 or something. I don't know. But it's just a case. There's nothing else in it. And then this is a very Mac Pro knockoff case. I presume that it, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no drive in there or anything, but... I think I've got everything I need for that. Again, I paid too much money for it, and I really don't know what I'm going to do with it. This thing in the front is kind of broken, but that's okay. So, I think, other than packing, I am pretty much ready to go for this trip. But somehow, of course, like usual, I'm getting the feeling that something is going to go wrong. I'm leaving very early tomorrow, in about basically 12 hours from now, so... <laughs> Things are definitely well on their way to getting started. Now the next morning, and I keep forgetting this that I need to take with me. Just about ready to go. Pretty close anyway. Oh, I forgot the keys to the car. That's pretty important. Kind of need those, eh? But, uh, we're locked and loaded.
Okay, I don't know at what point they died, but uh, I have arrived in my location. At least for the next little while. I'm not actually in this parking spot. Now, it's just that I have to let the required party know that I am here and see where we go from there. I've ever seen. Okay, so your mark is here. There's a corresponding one at each floor. There are, I believe, four floors in. Well, as you can see, you did a little bit of pre trip swapping and Thrifting, well, ham fest, pre ham fest, I guess you could say. I just hope there's enough space for everything else that I'm going to be getting. But uh, it is showtime, boys and girls. Let's go take a look at what's going on over in the packing department. Oh, yeah. Now, this looks like fun. <laughs> okay, so. That leaves us with this box that has to make it. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, this. I think I saw some extra real estate here. Okay. If the camera, while well, the camera can stay. Yeah, it'll fit. Testing. <laughs> it works. Bingo. Oh my god. Okay, so where is this? Well, if it's a really a problem, then I'll just put it in my car and I'll take it home and I'll never use it. <laughs> well, are you volunteering? <laughs> Yeah, I'm voluntelling is probably more like it. <laughs> You're being volunteered. You spoke up. You spoke up. Yeah, I dared to That's say something. That's the next low-end radio cassette deck right there. So here we are in the hotel room. Getting ready to go to bed for the night. So this is what it is. I asked for one with one queen, but I guess they don't have that at this hotel. So, I ended up getting one with two. And, I somehow created an accessible shower. You can see there. Apparently there's a fan in here somewhere that doesn't work. Or, now it's working, kind of. Anyway, so there's that. I mean, I don't really care. It's a shower, so and you know, you got your sink and all that other stuff. I have water and ice. Bought a bottle of water for a dollar fifty. What a joke! <laughs> Could have had one for free, but whatever. And yeah, I got extra ice in there. I don't really care about freezing it. I'm probably not going to use all of it anyway. So, I've got my technology. Somebody has managed to lock a prong in that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it with this, but can't use that outlet. And my air conditioner is off. But it's set at 65. It's pretty nice in here. It was off when I came in here, but anyway. I have this clock, so my watch says that it's like almost 12 o'clock, because it is. Actually, it's like 12.04 local, or 12.04 at home. It's 11.04 local time, but this says that it's only 10 o'clock, and I can't figure out how to set this thing, to be honest with you. I don't know if there's instructions on it or something like that. Maybe I could look it up. 
care. That's missing. And if we look up here, oh, there's my air conditioner. Missing a bulb up there, and it looks like somebody busted the fixture. So that's creative. But uh, other than that, I think I've got everything straightened out. I just need to plug in a couple last devices so they can charge. Not the least of which is this thing, which I'd hoped was actually going to have a full charge. But it doesn't, so I gotta plug it in. And hopefully it will actually stay charging. It's better than what it was. Brought the craplet because this thing is not powerful enough to really do what it needs to do. And apparently the Wi Fi signal on this is terrible, although it's not bad on this one. Jeez, it just kicked into tornado mode. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Got devices charging. I don't know why I brought the phone with the phone. I don't know why I brought the that with me. That wasn't very smart. And I had to buy a new phone cable, charging cable, because I left mine in the car and didn't bring my one from home like a boss. But I guess it's no matter. I needed one for work anyway because the cleaners utterly destroyed mine. Jerks. It wasn't even a cheap cable either. So, but yeah. It's like 11 o'clock, so I should probably go to bed. That might be a smart idea, right? So I guess I'll see you all in the morning. Well, that's classy. <laughs> so as it turns out, the bathroom actually works. Well, the shower actually works fairly decently. It's just that because it's an accessible bathroom, it is absolutely the most claustrophobic bathroom I think I've ever used. Actually, no, that's not true. I have used the bathroom in the basement of my grandparents' house, which is more claustrophobic than that. But, you know, it does actually open, it's just that the towel's in the way, so I gotta do that. But, uh, it's now Saturday. It's not 5.09, it's actually 6.14. I gotta figure out who all is up. Well, that looks actually pretty cool. To be honest with you. I mean, it's... From where I come from, that's a strange thing to put on the wall, but... It's a step above the usual religious stuff. Not that I have a problem with any of that. If, if that's what you want to see, that's certainly your prerogative. It's just not what I want to see. I'll look outside. Of course, there's not much to look at. Unless you're interested in high voltage transformers. Sunrise was like about three or four minutes ago. That's why I tried to put the cake up in the water compartment. That didn't turn out very well. <laughs> Oops. Not very good. But I'm gonna do this. Which looks really, really professional. <laughs> Especially because my, like, every time we hit a bump, my hand goes... And I don't think I want to be on this bridge. 
End of the second day, well, end of the first day. This is the first day of the ham fest. Um, but, uh, end of the second day as far as the trip is concerned, and I'm getting bombarded with messages apparently, which is great. Uh, probably because I just connected, the phone just connected the Wi Fi. Um, got the ham fest out of the way, got my stuff. My requisite junk finds, including this, which I may have to actually play with. I'll have to mess around with it later. Uh, but I certainly did not give $12 for that, so I should probably get myself rested. It's almost 12 o'clock. Okay, it's now the next day. It is Sunday today, which means it is the second day of the two-day trip to the flatlands of Illinois. What we're going to do today, I don't know. But stopping at the ham fest is pretty much out of the question. It's supposed to be a not particularly great day today, but I don't know, with the clouds that are out now, I have a hard time believing that uh, There'll be enough storm energy later on for anything exciting, but of course, you know, that's why I brought cameras. So, we'll see how this goes. Probably should start putting away some of this junk that I really don't need to be sitting out. The interesting thing about this place is just how little recycling there actually is. It feels really wrong to just dump it straight in the garbage, but. Maybe I actually get some decent driving video. I had a look at some of the footage. The audio is pants, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, it's usable. At the very least, it is 16 kilohertz with 16-bit sample depth, which is more than you can say for a lot of the cheap Chinese cameras. But it's still not very good. It's designer pants. <laughs> the video is not as bad as I thought it would be. Of course, Floridian over there feels the need to go flying. Say cheese, you're on camera! <laughs> because this I gotta see. Crash.
Should I start playing the Jeopardy music? Should I start playing the Jeopardy music? I found out I don't have it on my phone. I would laugh if that toe strap is too long. Okay, day three. I'm telling you what, it's a fun trip. I've loved every minute of it. It is, it's a fun trip every year. It's the highlight of the summer. Honestly, it's the thing for me that marks the end of the summer. But <laughs> I am, I am peopled out. <laughs> I am completely peopled out for a weekend. And it's not done yet either. Uh, still got uh, today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. I gotta think about that one for a second. Tomorrow and the day after. Yes, tomorrow's Monday and Tuesday. I go back home on Tuesday. We're going back home, or we're going back to Rochester tomorrow. The next step is going to be to put all of this junk away. Deal with that crap get all this taken care of just so that way everything is straightened out and I am ready to leave as soon as possible in the morning because it's about a 13 hour drive plus the stop so it's probably going to be more like a 15 16 hour trip I'd imagine maybe even longer I don't know we'll find out actually some severe weather um, that I wonder if it's actually visible anywhere. I kind of doubt it and I don't think these cameras have high enough fidelity these cameras. This camera has got high enough fidelity to see it even if it was. But uh, off in the distance there is some storm activity. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully it doesn't get too exciting. I can't imagine it will. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to offload today's videos from the camera glasses, see how they turned out. I'm not expecting miracles. Welcome to Indiana. So, we got to stop at Indianapolis for at least a little while, then be on our way. Unfortunately, the slog after Indianapolis is just that. It's a slog. I'm not sure how I'm going to manage to stay awake <laughs> for most of this, but this is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. This, uh, I'm telling you, the copious amounts of crap that we got. Not very smart. Not very smart. Look at all this nonsense. Welcome to the Toilet Bowl. Interstate 465 southbound. And that's how you know that you're in Indiana. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Out here, off of I-70. Time for a driver's change. Not me, because I'm the only one who will fit in the back seat. <laughs> still got a ways to go. It's 5.07. My watch still hasn't reset from central time, which is a little annoying. I don't know why it hasn't. It's supposed to be GPS enabled. Whatever. It's just like a lot of other things that don't work. But we haven't even made it to the Ohio line yet. We still got Ohio to go through. And Pennsylvania. And then New York. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so. I can't guarantee it'll be good because this is. We don't break out with all three of us in here. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't hit the emergency call button. I'll try not to. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. And it's leveled nicely. Yeah. Alright. We got our Tetris in there. I think I've got everything. Hopeful that I've got everything. Clearly I think what I need is a Mercury Grand Marquis. But maybe I shouldn't because then that's an excuse to just bring home copious amounts of crap. And I don't need more of an excuse to bring home copious amounts of crap. So, alright, time to send her home. Ooh, there's a pair of socks back there. Yeah, I'm such a friggin' heathen. <laughs> Okay, we're on New York 104. We've been on New York 104 for a while. I'm actually speeding <laughs> quite a bit. 67 and a 55. Oops, didn't even notice that. Um, we still got a ways to go, about 13 miles to our next change. I should be back home by f uh, maybe a quarter after four. So we can stop off and maybe start unloading some of the crap that's in here be nice but uh, yeah this is pretty um, not much really in the way of actual stuff but I'm sure that when the the, uh, the leaves change colors fully this will look absolutely stunning and it's a beautiful day today too bad I'm gonna be spending most of it driving I think it's raining at home so maybe I should enjoy this nice weather while I can
back to Canada. Home sweet home, folks. Home sweet home. I've got a Bronco tailgating me and I'm going 70 and a 50, so yeah, welcome home. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Murphy sakes alive. Oh God, room destruction. see why this was not going on when I came down. got copious amounts of stuff that I've gone ahead and unpacked. So before we look at any of it, I'm going to actually switch to a proper camera so you can actually see it a little bit better. Before we get to that, because somebody is going to point out the fact that this place looks different than what you usually see in my videos, that yes, I have a place of my own now. I've had it for a while. I just have not gotten around to moving everything over because, well, I'm industrial strength lazy material. So, <laughs> anyway. I'm actually going to start over here at this, which is a Sony model PS-LX250H stereo fully automatic turntable. I've never owned a turntable before. Actually, that's not totally true. I do have the Gendis Fujia one. That was my grandmother's. Um, but I have not really used it because it's a battery-operated only unit from like the 60s. I think the slip mat might have moved. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering why that looked weird. <laughs> Excuse me. Supposedly it plays, it just tends to skip a little bit because I, the suspicion is that the uh, well, I'm drawing a blank. It's been a long day. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> the stylus is a little worn out and needs to be replaced. Okay, let's go through this pile of crap. What do we have? Well, I have two batteries, courtesy of Black Knight 8001. These are for a ThinkPad T430. This one is just a generic Chinese fire starter. This one is Chinese, but slightly better than a fire starter. It's probably the one I'm going to end up using, because if I remember right, the battery in my ThinkPad T430 is completely toast. So, those ought to come in handy. Let me just get rid of this one entirely, because I don't know if I'm really interested in the Chinese fire starter, or maybe I'll keep it, and then when I go to use it, it'll die. It'll, well, it'll be completely dead, and when I put it in the computer, it will halt and catch fire. <laughs> This right here is a Quasar SVHS camera, full size. Let me move these out of the way so we can get this out. It was listed at $20, or marked at $20 at the Hamfest. Watch this cause a crap full hand when I do this. But it was scratched out, and it looks like it says make an offer on it. I offered him five bucks. <laughs> And the running joke, and I'm actually serious about this, if I had one dollar bills on me, I would have offered him a dollar. Because, quite honestly, it's probably not worth a whole lot, and I don't really use any of my analog cameras anymore. Not for anything completely practical, but it's in good condition. The foam on the windscreen is completely disintegrated. It was still in the, uh, the case, but of course, as soon as I touched it, it exploded into a bunch of black dust, so that's useless. Camera power is up, picture looks good. Uh, it's got a black and white viewfinder, so it's not quite as good as my Philips VHS Explorer, but 
That right there is a keyboard and a mouse for one of the computers that you'll see here in a few minutes. And a power supply for a laptop that you'll see here in a few minutes. Let's get this back where it was. I have a couple 8-tracks because apparently now I'm starting an 8-track collection in addition to a vinyl collection. Not that I have space for any of them. They're pretty decent. These things I moved over, a couple of CDs and a cassette. I did have one more cassette, but of course I left it there like a boss. So, nothing particularly fancy. I also had an Ethernet cable that was in the same bag as the other cassette that I left. <laughs> so, eventually I'll get those. I have four blank tapes with unknown contents, if they even have anything, and then some sealed tapes that, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not sure these are actually Sony tapes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I looked that up later, or somebody does it and posts in the comments, looks that up and finds that it is actually a real Sony tape, because I'm not casting any aspersions on it just yet until I verify, but uh, some of the, the quality of the English on these packages is not very good, as you can probably guess. And the other thing I've noticed about this is if you could take a look at that, the label is printed off-center. Like it's... It's tilted a little bit, and I don't think that Sony would do that. Now, then again, it's possible that that's just an accident. But both of these tapes are like that, and it's like it in exactly the same way. The big score was free, courtesy of Kirby Crazy. Uh, apparently, he was trying to sell it for $40 and had no taker. Well, I'll certainly take it for free. <laughs> This is a fun one that will almost certainly have videos made on it. Yeah, like I said, this is cool. In fact, it's not just cool, it is beyond cool. And it's so cool I can't even get the case open. There we go. Check that out. This is a working Zenith Super Sport. Now there was some question over what CPU it had at. And as it turns out, it is in fact a 286. Even though it does not call out that it was a 286. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. It doesn't call out anything having to do with the 286. I looked at the model on the back, which I forget what it is. And it turns out that, yes, it is indeed a 12 megahertz 286. The display is a little messed up. Um, it's degrading a little bit. It's still usable, but it's kind of difficult to read. But it comes with the computer, the power supply, at least most of the power supply. The battery, which I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, actually is somewhat good. It was able to hold a charge. Probably not much, but... You know, I was able to boot it up and run some programs, and it still worked. I have the boot disks. I don't have anything... I think one of these is empty, the other one's got the boot disks in it. A Diconix. Uh, printer, portable, uh, I presume it's a portable, uh, I almost said laser printer. Again, I'm out of it right now, it's been a long day. Portable dot matrix printer, it hooks up by a parallel. Have not tested it, it came with batteries, but of course those were dead. It takes five, uh, nickel, uh, sorry, ni yeah, nickel cadmium, uh, C cell batteries. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun one to go ahead and take a look at. I used to have one of these a long time ago, although mine was the 8088 model, but it was also a dual floppy. And unfortunately, mine had a bad floppy drive, so I only had one floppy in mine. But this one, I think at least both floppy drives are good, which is pretty cool. This thing here, courtesy of Weasel 2 HDM, it's just an HP Stream 11, probably a gigantic steaming pile of crap. But there were several of them, and I figure, you know what, it's worth taking a flyer on it. Also courtesy of Weasel 2 HTM, this is an HP Vectra VL Series 4. It says it's a 5 slash 133, but that's not true. It's actually got a K6 upgrade. Oh, the power button is working well, I see, but uh, I'll have to fix that before I make a video about it. 
And of course, it's got the optical drive and the floppy drive. I actually have one of these at work that does not have the K6 upgrade. So, I didn't need this, but I wanted the K6 upgrades. So, well, there you go. This I actually traded for the broken uh, digital Celebris. Courtesy of if you like good ideas. It's an AT&T Globalist 375TP PC. I've never seen an AT&T PC before in person, other than the AT&T PC 6300. This, uh, I, I can't even begin to describe the frivolity that is this. It's a Gateway Performance 1400, courtesy of Kirby Crazy. I only wanted it because it's got our DRAM in it. I don't need that anymore because I've got the GX400 at home, which is probably a better system than this piece of crap is anyway. But, computer's a computer. Makes a video, right? This is at the Hamfest. It's a little weather radio. It's got digital, digital screen, although the screen's pretty useless. Doesn't really do much. Um, you see you wanted $12 for it. I offered 5 he accepted 10 Probably not worth 10 bucks, but the batteries are good, so what else can you ask for, really? And it's already programmed for my local frequency. So, that's cool. This was actually in the HP Vectra 486-33U, which I took down there and gave away because I really don't need it. I have a Connor CFS 210A hard drive, 210 megabytes, courtesy of Weasel 2HTM. These are the books for the Zenith. Uh, Super Sport. I, they were in the case, but I can't actually get the case closed with these back in there now because I forgot how they go in the case, so... They're just sitting out now. I have the complete 2001 season of the Red Green Show on DVD. I don't know who brought this, but I have it. These two are Hamfest finds. They're both a dollar. Um, I don't know why I grabbed them, because they're parts units, as you can probably tell. Uh, the one on the top is an IBM ThinkPad. I think it's like a 370-something. I take that back. It's a 770E. Nothing special about it. Again, I don't know why I grabbed it, because it's very obviously missing the hard drive, but... I do have the power supply for this, which is more than I can say for the GTAC ruggedized PC that's underneath it, which I think is a 486. So I'll have to probably fashion a power supply for that. Yeah, they're probably both useless, but... You know, if I can find parts for them for fairly cheap... That, courtesy of If You Like Good Ideas, is a SEMA Video Studio 500. Stereo video titler and processor. I've been told it's an immense piece of crap, but I figure it's free, I'll take a flyer on it. Speaking of things that are free that I'll take a flyer on, this is probably a much better device. It is a Extron Annotator Annotation Graphics Processor. I think it can do titles as well, and scaling. I have no idea if it works, but again, it was free. So, if it doesn't, who cares? Courtesy of Blacklight8001, I don't know why I spoke for this. I opened my big fat mouth, because this would not fit in the car on the way down to the ham fest. So I opened my big fat mouth and ended up taking it home. It's an Akai, uh, I don't know what the model is, I can't really see down there. Uh, tape deck, single well. I don't know what the operating condition is in, mostly because I, if I was told, I don't remember. Weasel 2 HDM gave me that, that is a Yamaha. SCSI CD-ROM drive, sorry, CD or W. Caddy loader, it's missing the caddy. I think I probably have the caddy somewhere around here. But, again, I don't know why I spoke for that. I don't need it, I'm not gonna use it, but hey, it's there. We've got a small world of camcorders. We've got this one here, which is just some random VHSC thing. It's an RCA brand, small wonder. No idea if it works. I didn't test it because well, it wasn't that expensive, and it's got some of the accessories. I was going to pretty much buy it whether it worked or not. It's got the power supply, and it's also got the VHS, sorry, the VHS-C to VHS adapter shell. Alright, forget it. I'm not putting that back together. 
<laughs> Underneath that is what? I actually don't remember what this one is. It says Sony on it. So let's see. What is this? There were some DVD camcorders courtesy of Kirby Crazy that I passed on because, well, DVD camcorders are useless. And that's a little Sony. DCR HC32. Again, I have no idea what the operating condition is because I've slept since I got all these things, but this is certainly courtesy of Kirby Crazy. I remember that. Oh, what's else? I think I got the manuals and everything for that, so not bad. Blacklight 8001 gave me this. SCW87 Samsung camera, high 8. There's no view screen, but I don't care. Probably all it needs is a charger, which I've got, so it's not a big deal. If You Like Good Ideas gave me this. This is a sharp view cam of some description or another. It's actually, well, it's hi-fi. Ooh, it's a high 8 model. I wonder if I got the power adapter for that, because if I do, well, I've got some of the power adapter anyway, as it buys the farm. I wonder if that's the same power adapter that the other Hi8 model that I've got needs. I should probably check that, because if it is, I'm going to take that over to the other place and maybe give that a use, because I have another Hi8 model that I don't have a proper power supply for, and getting that thing to run is a pain, so it'd be nice to have that. Here's another camera, JVC Mini DV. Again, I don't need it because I don't really use my DV cameras for anything, and I hate mini DV as a format. It's terrible. Uh, and then there's this, which I think is a digital point and shoot. A fairly nice digital point and shoot, but a digital point and shoot nonetheless. Yeah, here we go. Fujifilm Fine Pix S5000. Probably not unlike my, uh, Konica Minolta Dimage Z10. I have a small world of expansion cards here, courtesy of a number of different folks. If you like good ideas, Weasel 2 HTM, probably others that I'm forgetting. I've got two of those. These are just SATA cards. Silicon image based. I think these are, what, 3132s? I haven't had good luck with those under Windows, but... No, oh, they're free, so who cares? There's a real tech. That is what, an 8169? So that might actually be Gigabit. I don't know. TEG PCI TXR. No, I think the 8169 is not Gigabit. I don't know. We'll find out. AGP card. Probably nothing special. Yeah, it's just a GeForce 2 MX. But AGP cards are not something I have in droves. There is a three-port, sorry, a four-port, I don't know why I said three-port, PCI Gigabit Network Adapter, and I'm wondering if it actually needs this, or if I could use it without it. I guess I could find out, throw it into something and see what it does, besides halt and catch fire. <laughs> oh. So there's the two PCI adapters, it's the network card, there's a hi-fi audio adapter, like a good quality one that I'll probably never end up using, the cables at the bottom. This I think belongs to the AT&T. I actually ended up with a couple token ring adapters for some reason, I don't think I wanted to grab them, but I did anyway. And I think there's another PCI expansion card down there with another dual gigabit network, sorry, a quad gigabit network adapter. Like I keep saying, it's been a long day, I am tired as all get out. So, there's probably more cards in here than what I spoke for, they just ended up in this bag. But this, right here, is actually from the HamFest, and it is a complete IBM PS2 planar board. There's some question as to what model it is, but based on the field replacement unit number that's on it, right there, from what I can tell, this is a PS2 model 9535, which apparently those are actually pretty hard to find. The only reason why I wanted it is because it's got SIMS on it, 
And I could probably use those in my Model 56 or 57 or whatever it happens to be. I think it's a 56. It's a 56 SLC2 if I remember right. So we got that. I think there's a couple more EGP cards. There's a Voodoo 3 in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. I have more clock radios because, you know, I need more clock radios, right? It's a Sears Roebuck SR1000, so that was kind of intriguing. That's the only reason why I bought it, because I've never really seen that brand before. This I bought so I could get the cost up, so I could actually use a credit card without it being completely stupid. Uh, it's just some Cosmo thing. This came out of the Goodwill uh, Clearance Center in Rochester. It's a Windsor of some description. Looks like it's been through the Vietnam War, and I think the power transformer is loose. I've never tested it, so I guess we'll find out if it works. I don't remember who brought this down to the ham fest, but I have it. It's a Sony Dream Machine of some description or another. That down there is actually a GE. Is it AM FM or is it just AM? I think it might just be AM. But that is a GE clock radio that's been fully restored by Kirby Crazy. I bought that ham fest 2019. And of course it's taken until now for me to be able to actually get it. This came from the ham fest. I think I offered him 35 for that. It's either 30 or 35. It's a Montgomery Ward airline of some description. Supposedly it looks like it's been fully restored. There's a modern cap on the antenna. So it, uh, I know that it works. We plugged it in, powered it up, and it does seem to actually tune in stations, although the tuner is a little messed up, unfortunately. If I do that, you can see that it's very, very, sorry, very out of alignment. This is, yes, it is exactly what you think it is. It is a GPX AM FM pocket radio, but it's actually a vintage GPX. I wonder if that's the date code there, 82073. Kind of wonder about that. Should actually look it up and find out. It worked in the store, but as it turns out, the battery that was in it just could not handle it. It had an old battery that had expired like 11 years ago. And trying it out in the store, I guess, was the end of that because I brought it back and it just kind of sputtered when I tried it again. So, oh well. It's not too bad, I guess. And of course, last but not least, we have this from a Goodwill. It's an Ampex Micro 9 uh, shoebox cassette recorder. The belts are not bad, at least not totally bad, because it will play, but I don't know if it's playing at the correct speed. I will have to test it a little bit further. But we're not done yet. I do still have some more stuff sitting out in the car that's going to come back to the main house with me. Uh, just because I have immediate need or immediate plans for it. And one thing that I'm not going to leave here because I'm not going to run it in here because it's loud. We'll put it that way. Okay, I've gone ahead and pulled the other stuff out of the car. So... One thing, which is now in pieces, was this Sanyo, what I believe is either a 12 or a 16 inch oscillating fan. I want to say it's a 16 inch, because that looks awfully big for 12. There's the rest of it, sitting right there. Let me see here. Get some lighting here. And maybe some focus too, and you can see that this is probably one of the nastiest fans I think I've ever seen. The blade retention screw is broken, so I'm going to have to improvise something. A little plastic piece is missing, and somebody chose to fix that by fitting it with a bottle cap. There's this thing. It's HP Pavilion. What is this, an A3 A420N? I can't remember. Yeah, A420N. Here's the specs. It has been changed a little bit. That HP CD writer is now a DVD RW drive. 
See box spec labels for details. And the power switch, which is actually intact, although it sticks. This case is in better condition than the one that I the one that I have, the A320N. But I hate to junk on any of the components in it because I think it's all original. So I'll have to power it up and see if it does anything useful. The last thing I got, like I said, it's, it's loud. Maybe it's even proud. I paid way too much money for this. Yeah. This is... That's upside down. A Benjamin Electric. Looks like a 152L or something. I don't know, 8152L? I'll have to look that up. Industrial Signal. Basically, a giant horn that was probably actually used... Well, I don't really know what it was used for. There's a switch on it. Um, but most of the times, these were used in conjunction with large loading dock doors. And they were used to notify individuals in the vicinity that the door was opening or closing. This is probably one of the most questionable power cords I've ever seen. But maybe we'll see if it works in a video. So I guess that wraps up HamFest 2022. It's over and done with. And I gotta tell you, as fun as it is, as fun as the trip is, meeting everybody is, I mean the HamFest this year wasn't that great. Um, I would make the argument that it was worse in 2019, worse than 2019, I should say. And 2019, from what I've heard, wasn't that great either. Uh, part of the problem might have been that they had to change venues rather suddenly. Which wasn't their fault. There was an issue with the original venue. The venue it was at, I actually happen, and I think most people happen to prefer over the venue from last year. I didn't go last year, so I can only go based on what I've seen, but from what I've seen, last year's venue was pretty dingy and not very good compared to where it was this year. But I'd imagine that a lot of people just said, well, the hell with this. I don't have time to make remake all my hotel reservations, etc., etc. I'm just not going to show up. And that was how that ended up working. So with any luck, it'll be better next year. But even if it's not, honestly, the ham fest is more of an excuse to take a vacation, pawn off some junk on other unsuspecting folks, and have junk pun pawned off on me when I'm not suspecting it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, like I was saying, as much fun as the trip is, I'm glad to be home. Very glad to be home. So... I think we'll call this good. Stay tuned for videos of some of this stuff in the near future. I mean, I can't guarantee I'll make a video of all the random expansion cards that are in that box, but they may show up. But there will certainly be videos about some of this stuff coming up in the future. But as far as this one's concerned, I would like to thank you for watching, and if you have a comment, please feel free to leave it down below.